We're in today with the GTX 1060 again with this awesome video card with 6 gig of VRAM. But the thing is, today we're going to test it with a different system, with this uh, i7 second gen. Let's see how the system is working. This i7 second gen is quite powerful with 4 cores and 8 threads. It's got 95 watts on max TDP. This is not a bad CPU. The only thing I'm curious about this is how this uh, 2016 video card with uh, 1280 shaders is running with the CPU because this video card has got GDDR5 memory, 6 gig of VRAM, running at 1500 megahertz with 2000 megahertz on the memory clock. All that being said, I want to see this pair, how it's going how it's rocking, how it's handling the games and who it's lagging, the GPU or the CPU, because the CPU is good, the GPU itself is good. Let's see how it's handling some games. That's it. Let's jump in in a couple of games and see how it's rocking. All right, let's start with CSGO. Let's, let's see what settings we got in CSGO. 1080p, low details, everything it's on uh, performance mode. I'm actually surprised how the, the game is performing. It's, it's something that I really appreciate when it comes to an old hardware like this. When you talk about a CPU like this and a system like this, you can actually see that the, the CPU is doing a fantastic job. 40, 50% load on the, on the core with uh, 7.5 gig of uh, system RAM. It's not something that uh, you want to, how should I say, put on the side because the system itself, the CPU itself is still healthy. It's using 40, 50 watts, you know, even though this CPU is rated on 95 maximum TDP. Those four cores from this CPU is doing a fantastic job and you can actually see how healthy the whole thing is. Damn, that shot was so nasty. <laughs> Regardless, on the GPU side, I got 1.3 gig of VRAM used. The GPU is barely used on the maximum 40-45% load on the core. It's ideal for uh, this type of game with 60 degrees on the core temperature. I have to max out the fan because uh, 3000 RPM is the maximum RPM for this video card. And uh, I can keep the cool, I can keep the, I can keep the GPU cool. Oh my God, that shot. <laughs> I freaking love how the whole system is working together. It's like this, this GPU, it's the ideal GPU for, uh, for this system. Let's jump into GTA 5 and see how the system is performing with this uh, video card and this CPU. I want to see GTA 5 uh, having a nice performance. Let's disable everything. I think we're going to keep that FXA later and see if we need it. At first sight, I think the system can handle the problem. <laughs> this is going to be legendary. With DirectX 10, the system is still holding. Uh, the wattage on the CPU is, is something bananas. I never thought that this uh, CPU will be quite efficient like uh, how it's running here. The wattage is good. The cores are under half utilize so everything is okay overall the system is doing nice uh, there is no problem with the with the computer i love this idea of i7 second generation because uh, uh, it allows me to show you something that is very accessible it's uh, not that expensive comparing it to a brand new one this second gen platform it's delivering the performance with uh, a good video card so in this situation the gtx 1060 with 6 gig of uh, vram it's using only 2.7 gig uh, of vram and uh, in gta 5 i got nice temperature so when i'm driving the car apparently i get 40 fps 45 to be more exact on average 21 on minimals 32 on one percent those are good numbers but the only thing i want to see is which one is loaded the gpu or the cpu so in my case apparently the cpu is loaded more in my in my case here there is a possibility that in this situation in order to take the stress from the cpu i can load the gpu up by increasing the details for the gpu yes let's see if we actually i'm actually curious by simple resolution does it does it do if i put this on 2.5 does it load the gpu wow it loads the gpu <laughs> 2.5 ohm rendered imagine i think this is what 2k 4k wow look how much it loaded the gpu 4.1 gig of vram with uh, 80 90 percent load on the core i can actually create a 50 50 balance in between the cpu and the gpu so i never thought i will use uh, this uh, settings to actually see if i can load the gpu on frame scale i put it on 2.5 61 degrees now apparently from 50 degrees <laughs> because i started to put low, put, put some load on the on the gpu now there is a balance nearly half balance 
in between the GPU and CPU. I think I have to put it on two, double the render scale, then it will do the job. So on the system apparently managed to reach 10.3 gig of system RAM, that is good, from 16 gig because this is DDR3. And on the VRAM from the video card, it's 3.7 gig of VRAM. I, I can complain, seriously. Can complain, it's very smooth. I got uh, the frame time is not that ideal 25, 30, you know, which I have under 10. That's the ideal number that I want from the frame time. But uh, in this situation, the 0.11% is good, that is reaching nearly 30 on this. Actually, this is 27. Okay, let's see how War Thunder is working with this uh, system. I'll go and see the settings. I'm on low details with 1080p, no DLSS apparently for this one i think medium details will be okay let's restart it and see how we are going to play the game with medium details so the system itself it's delivering the performance hmm. 6.2 gig of system ram is using with the cpu i like the cpu how it's performing it's under 50 percent but i'm guessing because of the threads so the system is doing a fantastic job averaging around 115 fps i think it will be stable over 100 fps with 16 on minimal as well the frame time is fantastic under 10 sometimes it go over but uh, it's okay the performance is good okay, but uh, overall i like how it's performing the whole system but on the gpu side with 3000 rpm we got 70 degrees that is not okay and we got only 3.1 gig of vram loaded for this amount of performance i think i should have loaded more details into the game in order to have a better balance let's try PUBG and see how it's running with the system it's gonna be legendary the only thing i want to do is take the surrender scale if it's lagging and uh, adjust it in such a way so we can keep 1080p and i'm gonna see how uh, the whole system is loaded let's jump in PUBG in a nutshell with uh, i7 second gen with this uh, GTX uh, 1060. Well, this GTX is not that bad, you know. It's uh, got 6 gig of VRAM, but apparently only 2.7 gig it's used. The system is maxed out, you know, on the CPU. I think uh, we can put some details, but you see the spikes here? That spikes is gonna cost us really hard on the overall performance. I think I have to put uh, Polender scale down. 9.7 gig of uh, system RAM is being used. The CPU stays really hot on this situation. 74 degrees. I have to look on a better cooler because uh, this is not the right cooler for it because I was using this on an i3. <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking on uh, getting a proper cooler for this because it will be constant the only problem i have with this video card i didn't buy it earlier i'm so sad that i realize only now how great this video card is that's it after so much time spending in the game I still managed to deliver 75 that's a good number uh, on average you know this the, the gpu didn't manage to heat up that much 72 degrees 3.4 gig of vram used it's not that bad 10.2 gig of system ram nearly 60 and 60 watts consumption i love how the whole system is working even though, though the the cpu is maxed out on the core so let's jump into apex and see how it's uh, doing with my system apparently we're gonna use a 1080p with uh, adaptive uh, fps target so we can get uh, enough fps so we don't complain about the system on the vram side and on the system side it's it we're really balanced because uh, only it's uh, 8.6 gig of system RAM from this computer with this i7 second gen, yes? Now, on the GPU side, it's only 2.2 gig of VRAM, so a 3 gig of video card will do the job. Seeing the CPU running at 60 watts, I love it because it's old and uh, it still works and it's cheap and it's available. Everything is good about the CPU. Nevertheless, the average is good, 110 FPS with uh, 66 minimals and 86 on 1%. Let's jump into Fortnite with performance mode and see how it's rocking. Yeah, I think it's gonna lag. 200 FPS apparently I get with this. I'm not gonna lie, I like it. I like how it's working. You know, the only problem I have is in fights, you notice he's got like 40 minimas and that's kind of horrible when you try to play competitive here, you want to win the game. That's not okay. So the GPU apparently has no problems with this. Uh, it's loaded pretty nice, like 40%, 1.5 gig of VRAM used only with maximum RPM, I get like 60 degrees. 
I really like this computer, how it's performing overall. And uh, I really like this idea of an old system like this i7 second gen performing even today on online games. I don't have an overclocking motherboard to put on this CPU because I don't even have a proper cooler for it. Disregarding that, the only problem I have today is the temperature on both of the GPU and on the CPU. It needs to be better cooling. But aside from that, everything was flawless. Exactly what I wanted. I think this is a good machine to play online games on 1080p. I mean, low details, of course.